Everyone, we're slowly letting everyone in. If you can, please make sure your mic is muted. No, 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 no. Just please make me a co-host, please. You mute the mics. One Are we ready to get started? Yes. Awesome. Are you pulling up the thing, Sam? The or no? Is it too early? I don't I don't know if it's supposed to be up or not. Yes? All right, good evening, everyone. And welcome to MPU University. Uh, this is the sixth class in our planning track, P1006, Introduction to Geographic Information Systems, better known as GIS. Um, I am Leah LaRue. And I'm joined tonight by my amazing team um, who will greet you. Samantha, who is our registrar of MPU University and program manager for training and education. Hey, everybody. Tony McNeil, who is our program manager for uh, outreach and engagement. Good evening, everyone. And Nicole Jenkins, who's on our resources and support team, along with Daniel Vasquez. Hi, all. All right, so Daniel's just going to wave uh, hello, um, maybe. Daniel, can you hear me? Can anybody hear me? Yes, okay, so I'm still in the land of the... Yes. <laughs> All right, great, thank you. All right, so Daniel says hello, y'all. Um, welcome again to GIS, uh, intro to GIS. Couple of uh, ground rules. First of all, if this is your first time at MPU University, I am wanting to welcome you. Um, we are very, very happy to have you here. I hope that you'll find value in this class, and I hope that you'll visit our website at mpuatlanta.org to uh, find out if there are any other classes there that might be of interest to you and get more information about those classes. During the course, please do keep your microphone muted at all times. Uh, if you have a question or a comment, to make during Q&A, you can raise your hand to get in the queue and I'll show you how to do that shortly. Uh, you can also use reactions to clap or give a thumbs up if you are so moved to do so. And our most important question, uh, I'm sorry, our most important uh, classroom rule is that all questions must be relevant to course content. That means that in this intro to GIS course, your questions should be specifically about GIS. We state that because obviously uh, this program is produced by uh, and sponsored by the city of Atlanta. And as such, it is not uncommon for us to have participants in our classes who um, have sometimes genuine, sometimes valid gripes or concerns or uh, issues that they want to raise. I, as much as we are interested in hearing those, this is not the platform for that. If you do have questions, concerns, complaints, et cetera, 
about your neighborhood, your life, uh, your experience in Atlanta, please do feel free to email us if we can assist you with that. Or of course you can call 311, but you can reach out to any one of us after the meeting and we will help you, I'm sorry, after this class and we will help you get connected to the folks that can address your issues. For this class though, please make sure that your questions are limited to course content. If you'd like to raise your hand to ask a question, please click on reactions at the bottom of your screen and a pop-up box will appear at the bottom of that pop-up box you will see um, where it says raise hand um, and that's where you raise your hand you select raise hand all right i think by now most people know how to do that already but every once in a while we get someone who does not um, so i'm really excited to have with us tonight and i'll uh, turn over the floor to them and introduce them to you, introduce our my colleagues, our GIS team, who will be presenting this course tonight. Um, my uh, Paul Thomas, who is the GIS manager. And Paul, I'll let you introduce your team as you see fit, but I do want to extend our sincerest gratitude to all of you from GIS who are joining us to present this class tonight. Thank you so much for being here with us on tonight. The floor is yours, Paul. Thank you very much. I very appreciate your team for setting this up also. Um, the dynamic team you have going on with the MP, MPU team. Uh, for you, Leah, uh, Samantha, uh, Daniel, I mean, the whole team, I think I don't wanna miss any, any names. I mean, you have a lot of new people over there working with you. But um, first of all, I, as you can see the, the, the photos in front of you, there, this, this is the team. I'm Paul Thomas. I'm the GIS manager for the Department of City Planning. Uh, we have Mr. Graham Pickering, who will be speaking with you later on. Um, he's our GIS coordinator. He's, he's new to our department last um, year or so. Mr. Carl Chaston, one of our GIS analysts. Mr. Stuart Henderson, Sharita Underwood, and Lisa. Lisa is no longer with us. She Friday was her last day with our organization, but uh, but. A lot of stuff that we're going to be presenting, she's responsible. She was, she was, a, she's been a dynamic team member. Um, she could come on board and help us really move forward with a lot of initiatives that we had. So, um, so she's been a, a major part of what we've been doing. So, but I want to thank everyone for um, for joining us for this class, and I'll jump right in. First of all, uh, let me share my screen. Can everyone hear me? Fine. Okay. I'm gonna try to slow down because I know I'm from the deep south and I speak fast sometimes and um, I do have a stutter. So I try to slow it down. So um, let's find my share button. Okay, so first of all, I'm gonna start off is first I want to do, give a just a quick overview of what is GIS and what it is that we do in our department. And right now, this is our new GIS website. So we've kind of revamped. We did a lot, a lot of we restructuring a lot of our data itself, and we've pretty much built a lot of powerful applications that we want to make sure that that this platform will allow you to see what you have your have access to. Because most people go to one or two applications that we have, you no, know, the property info or planning viewer. And mostly property info, but there's a huge portfolio of applications and that you have access to to get very rich data that we have from the city and we have that we maintain for the city. Now this is our new website. It's fairly um, much cleaner than before. And so, what is GIS? So now, Jack Dangerman is he's the, the president of Esri, and so he has a very technical definition. You know. That was useful for providing us with a more complete picture of the relationship between all the elements of various natural and cultural systems we depend on. Very high tech. But basically what GIS is in the simplest form is that we just create a digital representation of the real world. Now, GIS isn't exact. It's not an exact science. So it's just a representation. So nothing, you should never take what you see on our website as factual, as the end and end, end all be all, you also need to do, that's why we have planners and professionals that work in our department also that deals with zoning and all these other things and MPU boundaries to give you more detailed information. But this, but GIS is a visual representation 
the best we can to represent what is possible, what is out in the real world itself. Um, like, like boundaries don't really exist in the real world. There's really a, a physical boundary that you actually see. So, but we generate a line that represents what that boundary looks like or should be. So in all cases, it may not be exact, but it's a good representation that you can go for. So that's why you can always take the GIS. It's a good representation, but it's not the exact where you should make all final decisions based off of what you see on that GIS website. So there, there are some errors um, as it comes with anything in technology. So as we move further down, we have some of our popular applications. And so this property info is the one that most of you are probably familiar with, where it is designed to really give you basic information. You type in an address or click on a parcel, it gives you all the basic information on that parcel itself. Um, one of our colleagues can go jump in and give more of a detail demonstration on that. We have our planning viewer, and this is one of our newer applications, our um, council district dashboard, because now we're in the process of doing this redistricting. Oh, so I've been recording. So we've been doing a lot of the redistricting. So a lot of stuff is going on right now is that we are now providing with the new census, all of the demographic information for every council district based on um, the current um, council district configuration and based on the 2020 census. It's a dashboard that breaks down all the demographic information um, for all the council members. We have further applications to know if you want to. So what we've done is taking our planning viewer, which is a very robust application, and we decided to streamline a lot of those, make them lightweight. Things that only do one or two things rather than trying to do a lot of things at one time. So um, our team kind of came together to start making these lightweight applications. So now Community lookup. You can go here and just identify, you can type in your address or click on a point. It tells you who your council member is, what neighborhood, NPU, all the base, all just the basic information a person would need. Um, mailing label generator. If you want to generate labels to send out to your community, you can come here and create those on the fly. Lot boundary search, you know, zoning maps. It, and this was became a very big one here. I want to know if is my address, do I actually live in the city of Atlanta? Yes or no? A very quick application, you type your address in, immediately you know yes or no whether you're in the city or not. Very straightforward. So in addition to that, we also have a very rich, um, I'm just gonna do this. Yeah, so all this stuff is loading slowly. So, okay, sorry about that, let me just refresh this data pool. Had some things open so long that okay, let's refresh this data. Sorry about that. Paul, someone asked to define GIS. What does it stand for? Oh, I'm sorry. Geographical Information System. Let me try this again. Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah. So now here in our map gallery, so you can go through. There's additional apps that we have also. You can go through the zoning layer, um, rezoning cases. This is the municipal option sales tax. And also we have a tutorial also so that we have we create videos that kind of walk you through how to use some of the applications and, and some of the um, um, uh, tools that we have within our, our database. And we have a lot of applications, just one-off applications, 3D models. Um, this is a very cool application. If you get a chance to look at this spyglass where you can see the city today versus the city in 1949. So as you span over different areas, you can see how the city looked in 1949 compared to today. So it's kind of a, a spyglass where you can kind of peer through those two layers. So that's a very cool um, application to, to look at. And um, and finally, we have here our open data hub. So if you're kind of computer savvy or GI savvy, you can come here and download any of our layers that we maintain, any of the parcel layers, um, you know, city zones, city boundaries, everything you can, you can think of that we maintain within the city, you can download that data for free. You can download it in different formats, a thing called KML, where if you don't have GIS, you can download a KML file and you can import that into Google Earth or to Google, and you can see our maps 
in Google, in the Google um, interface. Um, you can download the backend data, which is just the, the, the CSV file or the spreadsheet information that, that makes up the, those layers. So you have access to all this information at, at your fingertips. So this is a quick overview of the website itself. And so what I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna turn this over. Oh, one last thing, I'm sorry. For those who want maps, we have an entire map gallery. So the map gallery itself, uh, the map collection. So you can go through and download any map that you want, any of the, the um, zoning maps, the MPU maps, the council district, any maps you want, you have, we have access to download those free straight from our application, from our website. So you can download those PDFs and have them printed anywhere you like, or just keep the, 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 um, the digital copy to work with. But we give that to you for free. But if you want us to print it in-house, there's a pricing list for us to print those in-house, but um, just to cover the cost of the material. But with all those accessible for free to download. Now, like I said before, I'm gonna move on to Mr. Stuart Henderson. He's gonna speak and give more detail and give examples of the property information. Now, before I do this, does anyone have any questions? Uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna take questions kind of intermittent between each one of them, so we're not waiting to the end to try to ask a lot of questions and everything, uh, because we're gonna cover a lot of information. So if you have any questions right now, just over the basic website itself, um, please no, don't hesitate to, to ask right now. And then we'll move to the next topic. You have one question from Carla Causey, um, Paul. Yes. Hi, Paul, it's Carla. Um, just a quick question, because I think you're doing, like you said, a quick overview, we're gonna get detailed later. But you mentioned the, the type of file, is it KML or was it KLM? What? I'm what? sorry, KML. Okay. One more time. KML. Yes. Okay. yes, I have no idea who used to file that up. That's what they Google. That's one of a Google file. Matter of fact, I could pull it here and you can see it. Um, and and um, another was for the historical imagery viewer. Yes. Um, is, that, is that based on the cadastral maps or is that, you know, what is that? Historical imagery. Oh, when with the spyglass? Yes. No, no, no that, that's based on aerial photography. It's, the aerial, it's, it's aerial photography from 2017 and aerial photography from, 20, from 1949. It's based off aerial photography, just the, the orthos, the um, it's like satellite imagery itself. And so you see the actual buildings, um, buildings and neighborhoods today and how they used to look. See, a good example, if you, look, if you paint over the Georgia Dome, well, well, well the, 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 um, the Freddie's Bend Stadium, there was a whole neighborhood underneath that lightning. There used to be a neighborhood underneath the World Congress Center. And so when you pan over that, you see the neighborhood that used to be there. And now you see where the World Congress Center and all those exist now. So that's a very good contrast. You can see where the expressway used, used to be, because it used to exist prior to a lot of the development downtown. So it's just a way just to see, just to contrast what's happened over those, those years. Thank you. Sure, no problem. Okay. So what I do, I'll turn it over to Mr. Stewart. And Stuart would take it from here. I can stop sharing. Stop sharing. Okay. Can you guys hear me all right? Sir? Okay. Sure. Okay, um, I'm back here on the GIS website. Again, you can see the URL up top, gis.atlantaga.gov. And when you come onto the site, this is what you're gonna look at initially. And you just scroll down and we have all these, the popular applications. So one of the questions that a lot of people wanna know is what their zoning is. And say, if you have a piece of property that you're wanting to do like a personal hair, care home or something like that, and say, hey, um, I wanna open up a personal hair, uh, care home in my neighborhood, in my house, or 
in a house or a property that I'm looking to invest in. So you could say, just go in. This is one of the more simple uh, user-friendly uh, applications that we have is the uh, City of Atlanta the property viewer. So all you really kind of need to do is, is go over here and type in your address or an, an address, okay? That easy. Make sure you want to tr try to include the whole address as we got it standardized. So once you start clicking and, and entering your address, just go into the CD address locator. And it'll take you and scroll down to the address that, that is in question. Um, over here is on the right side, you got the property information. If, if that's not showing up when you type in the address, you can just click on the this and that will take away the information and then click back on it. And then you have all the information for that piece of property in, in regard to zoning uh, and, and land use. There's, if you want a more extensive information, you would have to go into, um, the property, the, the planning viewer itself. But this is sort of a simple one-stop shop. Uh, if you live in Fulton County, you can assess uh, and click on the, the Fulton County tax assessor information. This is in the tab. So you would be able to pull up the tax assessor information, uh, such as uh, the, the information that they share on their, their tax website, it leaks up with the different counties, GIS, uh, that they do for the property uh, parcel zoning information and, and assessment. Um, but if you want to know what the, the, the zoning is, here's the zoning. It says, gives you zoning, zoning classification. So the zoning classification for this property is R4A. Um, sometimes you can kind of guess what that means by R being residential, and then the four means sort of the density of this area. So this is a fairly dense area in a neighborhood of single family zoning. So this is a single SFR and single family zoning residential. So I want to know what can I do, what my setbacks are, or, or if I'm allowed to do a personal hair care home here. You can go in and, and look at our, what we call our muni code. And this is in our zoning description. So you would click on to more information. And this will bring up all the zoning regulations for the city of Atlanta as far as what their zoning is. So it gives a scope of provisions, statement of intent of what this does. And mainly you might want to know what are my principal uses for this. So of course, you got the permitted principal uses, and this is things that are most common with, with that particular zoning. Um, you got permitted accessory uses. So you could have a greenhouse, a swimming pool. If it meets, if your lot or your parcel meets the zoning guideline. So this is not always automatic that you're allowed to have these uses. Uh, a planner would look, or the building department would look at your, your lot and see if, if, if it meets the guidelines or not, or set back. And then there's special permitted uses. So these are uses that are not primary uses, like a family single wide home, but this could be special uses that would be allowed, such as churches, uh, you want to do a personal care home, a nursing home, a private school. Now, this doesn't mean that you're automatically, okay, a special use, I can get a special use permit, and this is going to be allowed. There's other guidelines that a planner would have to look at for your property, and they would also have to look at what is your parking situation? How are you going to, are you going to stagger letting people in to a uh, you know, a, a daycare or something like that. Um, is, is your area, you know, they have to notify your neighbors. So all the traffic that's coming in for the daycare, is that going to be a problem? And, and, and when you 
create and do a special use permit, they, that's one of the things the planners are going to be looking at. So they're going to be looking at, hey, do does, does they have a traffic plan? Is it a one-way street that's going to cause problems? Or things of that nature. So that they, they in, in, if it's a, say, a personal care home or rehabilitation center, there's other ordinance that the city has, say you can have a personal care home within a thousand feet of another personal care home. So those are kind of things that they'll do due diligence on to look at whether this special use is allowed. So, so any, any questions as far as the mini code goes right now? We have one question in the chat and um, it says, does it tell the owner price and if taxes are paid when you go um, to? That would be more of a county information with the parcels. Uh, and, and so we, we in the city do not do the property taxes. That would be more of a county issue that you, um, I, I don't think they share um, anything that's been paid unless they're delinquent and they put it on the delinquent list, but don't quote me on that because that, that is more of a county issue. But, but to point? answer that question too, I, I think they can actually see some of that information like price and sales history. If you click on that link to the county assessor site, you can see a lot of that information that, um, that Rhoda is asking about. Really, in the city, when you take consideration, city cities more consider development, and the county is more about ownership and taxes. So, if you're whether can I build on this lot, or can what can I build on this lot? What are the uses? That's sort of the city focus, and taxes and ownership and all that information. You can inquire on that, and there is a link to the county GIS, but that's something that actually the county uh, maintains. And so another question, when a home is in a townhome community, which takes precedent over permitted uses, the city or HOA? Those are HOA development, they're, they're, they have their own covenants that may be more restrictive. So their restrictive covenants is, could trump the use from what I understand. Another question is, can you show again how to make the jump from parcel information on the right side of the map to the zoning regulations? Yes, yeah, sure, sure. Let me, see. Let me go ahead and, and put that up. So here, here's all the property information. So you got your zoning classification and the zoning description is more info that links you to the unit code. These are what they call hyperlinks that gives you to different independent websites. So this is a hyperlink to the county's assessor's information. So they might, they give you some of the information like the value and this is set value. This is not necessarily market value in, in, in that information. So this is information on that particular property from the DeKalb County website. This is not information that we maintain. This is what the county maintains. We just provide a link to it, a hyperlink. So you have easier, it's kind of a one-stop shop so you don't have to just go around and like, what am I doing here? Um, you, we also have a zoning map link that you, we can click to that actually tells you the zoning area of the property. So this is in the Kirkwood neighborhood. So most of these properties are the R4A. You can see like the Pratt Pullman yard over here. There are some PDHs, which is more or less kind of like developments that follow a site plan. 
There's the Kirkwood Business District right here. And, and, but you can see most of it's uh, single family housing. Link it back up. And then you have the zoning map, which I just clicked. And then you can look at the old, mine, old mylars, which is before there was any GIS, we used to have hand drawn maps. And this goes back to some of the older. You can see some changes over here. These are just kind of like scan mylars that you can zoom into. And this is what the zoning was prior to the GIS. And then those are the hyperlinks. So you got the count, the two county assessors. So Atlanta's in both Fulton and the cab. This is on the cab side. You got the zoning description, which links you to the MENA code, which tells you what a little bit more details about what you cannot do. It also goes into the setback and, and more information, but that can get you kind of can get bogged down on the weeds with that. If you're not a planner, so it, it all, not only gives you the uses, it also gives you for special use. It also gives minimum lot size, so you can come in here if you know what your dimensions of your property are. You can say if you want to add an addition, what are your setbacks? Is it um, a non-conforming lot? Will it require a variance? So those are, you can get in some technical weeds in this information. But this is sort of the most simple, user-friendly, easy information tool that is at your disposal. Somebody asked, was R4A? Uh, yes, the, a lot of the zonings are kind of simplified, like R is residential, sort of single family. There's C's, the C zonings, I can look up a C property. Let me. So you can go here. So this is. Um, 900 to Cab Avenue. This is a C2 zoning, which is commercial. The, the higher the number, like if it's C4 or C3, the higher the density that's allowed. If it's like a C1 property, it'll be less dense, a bigger, bigger area. And, and, and again, you can just kind of look permitted use. It goes through like all the different things that are allowed in that business. This is a business zoning, special use. Again, that these are allowed uses if it meets the guidelines and it requires a special use permit. Okay. Stuart, another question we have, um, how do you print a section of the map with a lot number? Um, uh, well, I'm going go, go, to talk about that in the planning viewer section. Yeah, you can always, once you click on a map like this, you can download it to your computer right here. And then there's a print. Now, this is going to be a bigger size map. You can scale it if, if you know a little bit of technical areas of it, like if you want to go print and scale it. But all that information is available online. So any other questions? See a bunch. Samantha, you're on mute. How can you find information about previous owners? County. 
this county. Yeah, I, Again, I ownership is all yeah. about the county's property, the county's, yes. We're more, as a city institution, we're more about the built environment and what is allowed. This is for the planning office. The, the GIS for the county, the county is more focused on ownership and taxation. And taxation. I think that's it for the question, um, Stuart. Okay. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing. I think Shreda. Graham, you're next, correct? Uh, Sharita's Shreda, next. Sharita's next, okay. Sharita, yes. Thanks, well, guys. Um, hello, everyone. Um, let me share really fast. Uh, can everyone see my screen? Yes. Yes. Great. So now that we're talking about the nuances between uh, the county and the city, I will go a bit more in depth about that, talking about lot recognition, which is when we compare tax parcels to city approved cadastral configurations. So before we start, we're going to um, play a small little game if someone can monitor their chat for me called Spot the Difference. I'm going to show you two pictures and I want you to spot the difference. Let's get started. Are the answers supposed to go in the chat, Sharita? Uh, preferably yes. Or, okay. Uh, or if you want, someone wants to raise their hand and we can call on someone. We have an answer, um, DR, drive, I'm assuming. <laughs> okay, so that is a difference. But what I am really getting at get is look at the actual lots themselves. Uh, the drive label just tells you reference for the streets. I thought I saw a hand up, but. Jacob, Jacob. Yeah, I was just going to say <clears throat> the difference is definitely you have the structure on the lots for the map on the right as compared to the left. And it looks as if uh, from the original Castrill map there that you have uh, a more concise drawing from the map on the left as compared to the map on the right. That is also correct. Um, so good job for that. But I'm looking for something a bit more specific when comparing the actual lot boundaries. We had one winner in the chat, Nicole, um, mm. picked it out. Nicole she... pointed out that the lot on the right has an additional line in it or has been subdivided. That is the answer I was looking for. Thank you, uh, everyone. Great answers, though, um, and technically correct. But the answer I'm looking for was concerning this specific additional lot. Let's try another one. So we're looking at Kinlock Place. And once again, we're looking at the actual lot configurations. This may be a bit tricky. Carla, can I see? Yes, thank you. Um, the, the older map shows the boundaries that go all the way out to the street. Um, it includes the curve, it looks like. But when you go to the newer one, the boundaries are a bit more precise. So it shows like the front. I don't know if that includes the um, buffers. It, I mean, it's excluding the, the, the buffer from the curb to the parcel or not, but I mean, that's what I see that part, parts of the land aren't included in the other one. So is that ownership by the, by the city or? We will get there, Carla, if you could please just wait a bit. Oh, sorry. No, it's okay. Thank you for your answer though. Does anyone else have an idea about how the lots change and what the lot differences are? In the chat, someone says actual boundaries. Another person says, Five seems more narrow on the right. Um, the center lot is smaller. 
um, the lot of, of Kinlock appears to be smaller. Mr. Ward, you want to answer? Uh, yes, the, the, the map on the left actually gives you this lot size in terms of dimension of uh, width and uh, the lot size. On the map on the right, don't do that. That's also accurate. The answer I'm, however, looking for, uh, which is in reference similar to the last answer, is that there are no additional lots here. It was a trick one. Nothing's been uh, subdivided from the cadastral to the county. We can do measurements later and we will, but for the most part, based on just the eye view, the lots are the exact same. But I appreciate everyone's very attentive uh, answers. Let's do one more. Spot the difference. Looking at the lock configurations. Um. Carla, there's, would you... there's an extra lot. Yes. There's an extra lot. Perfect, perfect. So yes. Renee is right. Yes. Yes. So we had 2195 and now there's a 2193. So the question is, what are we looking at? So uh, we're looking at the cadastral on the left which is the city's record and the tax parcels on the right, which is the county's record. And as Stu was talking about, uh, and everyone talked about earlier a bit, uh, the county focuses on ownership and the city focuses on what we can build on a lot. And just because the county has one thing and this uh, does not mean that's the exact same thing as what the city has. So let's back up a bit and just hit on those definitions a bit harder, uh, just to clarify more succinctly. Tax parcel is the boundary of a property is defined by uh, the respective county which the property falls in. And the cadastral, pretty similar, but the boundary of the property is defined by the city of Atlanta. All right. How do these records come to differ? the big question, right? So let's say I am a bit older and I live at 72 Walt Hall Street. Now I've had a good life here. I've raised my family here. I've had kids here and I had a good time. But as it goes, my kids have gotten older. They've moved away. I can't maintain my garden like I used to. I have the option to A, move to a different place, a smaller lot of land, but I don't really want to. I really like my property. So I think, hmm, maybe, just maybe, I can sell the back half of my property. So I do all the work. I find someone who I think will make a great neighbor and I sell half my property to them. Now, I wanna do things the legal way. So me and the, new, um, and the person I wanna sell half my lot to, we go to the county and we do this through deeds. Great, I think it's over, it's done. So now the county represents my lot as the one on the lot, on the uh, right. Uh, my lot being the front one and my new neighbors being the back one. Everything's dandy, let's say for 10 years. Now, 10 years go by, let's say the year is 2020 and my back neighbor thinks, hmm, a one bedroom is not big enough. I also want a home office because I'm home all the time. I work from home, it's COVID. I, uh, my back neighbor comes to the city and says, hey, I want to build something on my property. What do you think the city will say? Uh, do you think they'll say, hey, 
just come on, you can build. Wrong. The city's gonna say, we do not recognize your lot of land. And that's because when the initial owner uh, subdivided the land, they went solely to the county and not to, uh, to the city of Atlanta. So we still recognize the one, part, the one lot of land while the county recognizes uh, the two different lots. Now I will switch over to looking at our planning viewer a bit and Graham will get more in depth about this. Now to see the cadastrals and the lots, uh, the cadastrals and the tax parcels in one place, you can go to our planning viewer, which is hosted on our, uh, on our GIS website. So right next to the property info, which Stu just talked about, we can go to the planning viewer. Already have it pulled up. Now, we the planning- your screen. Oh, okay, hold on. We still see the- um... Yep. Let me switch. Oh, new share. All good? Yes. Okay, so sorry about that. I'll just repeat. The planning viewer is next to the property info and is also on our GIS website. So if you load the property, uh, the planning viewer, our, uh, the tax parcels do automatically load. And if you want to look at the cadastrals, it's a bit more work, sorry about that. But you just select the layer list button on the upper right hand, oops. You expand administrative area, and then you can select land lot index. Once land lot index is selected, you can click on the, um, the lot that you're particularly interested in. You'll get a pop-up to your left that says identify and results. If you look under results, you can see that we have the cadastral. And you'd have to do a bit of work again to zoom in to the right area. So this is the inner around Walt Hall and Magna, Many Gold Street. Uh, so that would be about right here. And then you can compare our cadastral to the county's information. Now, if we don't recognize your lot, uh, it is important to come in and work with the planner who will get that recognized for you. Lastly, I know a lot of you were talking about the measurements. If you want to compare measurements from the cadastral to measurements from the tax parcel, we have this really nifty measurement tool. So you just press measurement. Uh, and then the distance, you can change it to feet, miles, kilometers, I like feet. And you can just click the intersection of, or a line that you want to measure, click the start, uh, drag as far as you need to, and click the end. And that line is about 50.3 feet, which is, it looks different than a cadastral. So that happens, but the cool thing about this also, if there is, if you did come to the city and you got this subdivision recognized, if you turn in on our document archive layer, we'll have a record of that. And you can actually click the document archive. It'll pop up as plat footprint on the left and you can see the work that's been done. And that is end, That is the end of my portion. Any questions? We have one to say, what was the remedy to plot to lot number 72? I think you're kind of showing it now, but. Yes, uh, so this person came to the city to get their subdivision recognized. If you come to the city, you can work with the planner and they'll help you get it recognized so that our records will be updated uh, to show what's also on the county's records. 
And then that's how we get to see this plat footprint, which is the most updated record we have. Okay. Thank you very much, Sharita. Okay, so you can turn it over to, I guess Graham will be our next speaker. Oh, is there any other questions, first of all, any more questions? It was just a quick question. How common is this? Can you repeat that, please? How common is it that you would have a, a need for an owner to come in and have to um, update that information about the parcels because they I'll, went to the county instead of the city? I'll say I have to redirect someone to work with the planner for that problem a few times a week. Also, let me remind everyone, please raise your hand so that we can recognize you for your questions. Jacob Mills, go right ahead, please. Uh, yes, my question is, does this, is, is this work the same way as far as the alleyways and existing streets that might have been abandoned over the years? Hmm. I am not sure. Paul, can you chime in on that part? Well, that, that is something that we, we kind of, because we kind of steer away from the alleys that we bring, we have someone to speak directly to the planners. Um, like, um, yeah, that's a big Christian, Christian, yes, yeah, Christian, yeah, Christian yeah, Christian Altiano they, is the person um, who's over, who's our assistant director for subdivision. He's the person who handles that because the city has is only recognizes a few true alleys in the city, and and there's different discrepancies on on what can be done with that, whether it's each neighbor takes half of that of that alley, but really you need to speak with uh, Christian. He has the definitive answer that goes to that. I mean, I'm not aware of what the true answer is when it comes to alleys, because we've come across that a couple of times and he's been the person who's handled that. And um, whatever the determination is, we've been the ones who just make sure it's updated on the GIS side as far as ownership. Yeah, I see, I see that come up a lot in our particular yes. neighborhood where there is not alley, the alleyway access was the only off street parking for properties. And, uh, you know, once they had been abandoned, if no one had actually taken them, there's no tree growth, are they able to be opened back up those types of things. So I, I appreciate that. I'll, I'll definitely reach out to Christian. Uh, no, we have Nichelle Bell with their hand raised. Go yes. ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, um, is the city, um, is it a city project that they're uploading those, um, those um, surveys to the, to, you know, the GIS as, you know, people get permits and, and, you know, um, those type of things are um, done through the city, you know, office of building and, zoning and you know development well specifically uh we do update the surveys that come through once they we have a process and once you work with the planner and the planners have finished their portion and you get a re, uh, your plan re, uh record it with the county and you'd send it back to the planner you work with the planner will send it to us and we will update our GIS to reflect your new plans for your lot. And that's how we got the document archive layer, which reflects that. Now the actual tax parcel, because that's done by the county, that may take and will take longer for them to update on their side, but we do notify them of the change. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And now, I will pass it off to Graham. All right, thanks everybody. Uh, thank you, Sharita and Stuart. You guys are doing a great job. Um, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, the planning viewer application um, and kind of step back just a little bit. Um, let me share my screen. Okay, so, um, Looks like everyone can see me now. So one thing I wanted to um, hop back in and point out is if you go to our website and you go all the way down to the bottom, you can find a link to email us. So if you need to get a hold of us, you can um, 
find this link at the very bottom of our website and that will go to our GIS team uh, email and we respond um, usually within a day or so. So please do get a hold of us if you run into any of these um, kinds of issues that um, Sharita is talking about or, or really any other problems that you, you find or questions you have, we're happy to help you navigate. Um, so the planning viewer is the application that I'm going to talk about. And again, it's on the main page of our website. Uh, Stuart talked about property info and planning viewer really has a lot of the same functionality, but it has some additional um, kind of tools uh, and ways to visualize some of these things that property info, info does not have. So I'm going to take this sort of assumption that, you know, I, I think some people in the audience may have some background in GIS, but I'm going to assume that people don't know the first thing about how to navigate a map. So this will be what you see when you, you load up um, planning viewer. And as you can see, as opposed to property info, which is um, essentially the, the city limits, um, and a blank website. What a good time for my son to come in into the meeting. That's chocolate. And that's chocolate. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to the people, so can you sit and just be quiet for a minute and watch? Okay. Um, so what we're looking at here. Are you looking at maps? Yeah, we're looking at maps. Um, <laughs> so we are looking at some data layer. So that term has been used quite a bit that's so a far. <laughs> a layer is um, a, a layer is essentially. Uh, anything that's on the map that you can represent. We call those or data layer, layers. Or a layer is a bad um a layer poet. like a layer where like an evil bad guy lives. That's a different use of the word <laughs> layer. Um, so up here at the top of the map is where you can find some of our um, tools. These are called widgets. So the, one of the most important things you can do is turn on the widget, uh, legend where, can you go wipe your hands? Thanks buddy. Um, and this is where you can see what those different layers uh, on your map are actually referring to. So again, I'm at the top of the screen and I've clicked this little um, button that if you hover over it, it'll tell you it's the legend. And this tells you what is being displayed on your map. The next most important uh, widget tool here is this little thing that looks like three slices of American cheese. And this is your layer list. Hey, Wesley. Wesley, can you close the door, buddy? You can't? Okay, the door is staying open. If you hear kids' cartoons in the background, that's, that's why. Um, so the layer list is what allows me to turn on and off um, some of the layers. And that, again, will change what I'm looking at on the map. So when you see a layer called administrative area and it's got a little arrow next to it, that means it has all of these sub layers. So I can go ahead and turn off the city limit. That black line goes away. Um, I can take a look at what's happening here. And again, so I check my legend. All of these red lines represent zoning districts. <laughs> Lines, lines, yeah. Um, so what I, is lion? Wes, can you, can you go watch the show? I, just, I gotta finish this part. Can you close the door on your way out too? Can you close it? Thank you, thank you. Uh, apologies, everyone. This is a six to eight p.m. Uh, meeting after all, so it's okay. Close it. <laughs> <laughs> So I could turn off um, that zoning district layer. Uh, and then I'm looking at the blue lines, which are my zoning overlay. So I can kind of customize my map based on um, turning layers on and off. Um, <clears throat> so one simple thing I wanna show you um, that's possible to do is just like in property info, I can uh, search up an address. 55 Trinity Avenue is where City Hall is. It will take me there. In addition to typing in an address, I can simply use my mouse to click on a point and it will bring up some information on the left related to that point. Now, the information that is brought up when I click or when I search an address is dependent on what layers I have turned on. So right now I have 
um, only my zoning overlay, a couple of these zoning map index layers. If I turn the zoning district layer back on and I click again, you'll see an additional record pulls up. So city hall is zoned for SPI one, and I can go to that zoning description, just like Stuart mentioned, and this takes me to that muni code. So same functionality as property info. Um, <clears throat> now, as I add some more layers, turn on some more layers. <laughs> I do <didn't> need my... <laughs> um, I'm gonna turn on the tax parcel layer. And now when I click on it, you'll see more information pops up. Now the parcel uh, number pops up. It'll tell me the owner of that property, the site address, and it like property info, it'll take me to that um, county assessor sites. So it's very important to think about what layers are turned on will shape the information that this application gives you back, okay? So let's say uh, a request we get often is, can you print us a map? Uh, let me shift now to um, showing you the print functionality. So up here in the top right, there's a button that looks like a printer. All you need to do to print a map is click it. And you can choose what kind of layout you want. Um, a is kind of the standard layout. And I can go to print. And when it's done thinking about it, I can click on this little um, Adobe icon and preview the map. <clears throat> so it's showing me City Hall. And if I can scroll down here, it'll also include in the legend on my printable map, only the layers that I have turned on here in Planning Viewer. So if I want it to include additional, like say the address point um, or any other layer, once I turn them on in the map, they will be available in the print function. So this is a really simple way for members of the public to print a map um, of whatever your lot or whatever thing you might need to print a map for. Um, you can do that very easily with our print widget. Um, some of the other things that are, uh, again, I wanna emphasize or kind of go back and, and talk about um, is that when you're dealing with some of these layers, so let me back up. Notice here, as I've backed out a little bit or zoomed out, that the address point and the tax parcel layers are kind of grayed out. We have this map set up so that when you're kind of, you're kind of looking at the city as a whole, the map is not trying to draw every single tax parcel in the city. It's something like 170,000 of them. It would make the map really, really slow. So layers that are grayed out means that you can't see them until you zoom in a little bit. So as I zoom in, you'll see that tax parcel layer turn black again. And now I can see these green lines that represent the tax parcel. And once they're visible, they will pop up in my identify tool. If I zoom out and the tax parcel is not visible, when I click on the map, it's not gonna return that parcel information. So that's a very important piece of using Planning Viewer and not getting frustrated with it is to, to recognize that not all of the, you can both turn layers on and off and some of the layers are only visible based on how far you are zoomed in. So address points is another one. You have to zoom in you know, pretty much all the way to get the address point layer to turn on. Again, because there are hundreds of thousands of address points, um, it can take quite a bit of drawing capacity to turn those all on. So they don't come on unless you are zoomed in um, quite a bit. So there are a lot of layers in this map, um, a lot. So if you need to see things on building moratoriums, you need to look at where the historic districts are. You need to find rezoning cases. Um, many, many other, um, some of these are, are highly specific to various kind of um, special projects that 
the city has done and we maintain a GIS layer. That document archive layer that Sharita talked about has those plats. So when those pop up, uh, I can turn those on and they will appear in my identify tool. And, and that's how you make some of these additional links um, available to you. So a plat PDF, um, you know, I can pull it up that way. And again, the plats and the cadastrals are, um, uh, well, the, the plats are available in Planning Viewer, the cadastrals are available in both Property Info and um, in Planning Viewer. Um, there are layers here that, you know, are kind of here for your reference, um, transportation and, and uh, things like rivers and so on that you can use if you want to. Um, I have a few more things to, to mention about Planning Viewer, but I guess I'll take a quick pause. I see a lot of things in the chat. Um, I'll take a quick pause to answer questions before I go on. I think Paul was actually answering them as you all. Oh, okay. You're actually pretty good there. Okay, um, I'll That's continue. Fine. I'll go ahead and continue then. Um, so there are a few uh, advanced capabilities within Planning Viewer that are, aren't available with property info. So I'll turn to those fairly briefly. And I'll say that most of these are typically, I, I want to say 90% of the use is probably by our own city planners. Um, but I'll, I'm going to show them to you um, to anyway. So this first one is, again, if you hover your mouse over these widgets at the top, it'll tell you what it is. This one's called Advanced Search. And what's cool about this one, I'm going to zoom out a little bit, is I can do a search on uh, where are all the places in the city that have a certain type of zoning. So as you see here, um, it allows me to search by zoning classification. So let's say I want to find all of the areas in the city that are zoned C1. They will all pull up in red on the map. And they also appear here on my sidebar and I can do a lot of things with that. So there's 178 C1 zones. If I click on these three little dots here, I can zoom to one of those individual records. I can export to GeoJSON, which is a, a Geo, GIS data format. I can export to a CSV, um, which is probably one of the more common uh, applications here. One of the other things I can do is, let's say I wanna add to this search. I want C, everything that's zone C1 and something else. I can go to this button, zoning district, add to current results. And then I can say C2. So I want pretty, everyone that's super pretty <laughs> I can now grab everything that's zoned both C1 and C2. Um, and so this is a way, again, more commonly used by people in the development community, but may be of interest to, to some folks um, out there. And again, the three little dots here is what allows you to export um, to various different kinds of formats. There are some additional tools here. Um, next to enhance search is a, uh, I can search areas that have gone through a rezoning process and there are different um, kinds of queries, uh, data, or I guess, yeah, attributes that you can search by. Uh, and we give you little hints here, if you can see that in faint kind of gray, I can search by the land lot, I can search by a street address, I can search by a zoning case number, or I can search by a city ordinance number. So again, this tool is um, probably gonna be used if you already have a document in hand, you have a zoning, um, a rezoning case that you wanna go back and research, you can plug that in here. And um, pull it up. This might actually pull up nothing. So I can pull up um, Z97, so which was a rezoning that happened in 1997. And I can find in this document link, I can find the actual ordinance, the city legislation um, that approved that rezoning um, application. 
So again, mostly used in-house, but if you are um, interested in this kind of thing, um, you can use this tool. And then the last one I'll mention um, is the plat search tool. And this is, again, if you have a very specific record of a plat that you wanted to search, um, you could enter it here and pull that up. Now, again, you can also find that by going to your layer list. Um, also layer. A layer, in this case, Wes, is a GIS. It's a map layer, not a, where a bad guy lives. So, um, I guess I can pause and take some questions. One other thing I didn't mention, you can bookmark certain places on the map and then you can also change the base map if you want to. And the base map is the underlying map. So if I wanna make this, um, you know, a dark gray canvas, I, I can do that. So that's some of the functionality that's available in Planning Viewer. I think most people use property info and it suits their needs. Um, but if you need to go a little bit deeper and do a little bit more research, um, you can use um, Planning Viewer as well. So I'll pause there. I don't know if there are any additional um, questions, but feel well, free. Well, I think Graham want to mention also, one, one of the, the defining differences is also, you can also print. I'm not sure if you mentioned that. So if you zoomed in and you want to create yeah. your own map, you can actually zoom in and create your individual map, you know, turn on the layers and print that out. I, I went through the I went through the print um, widget. I did, yeah, I did. Ms. Brooks asked, "Is there is this where I can search for building permit applications?" Actually, our dashboard. But go ahead and answer that. Sure. If you want to search for building permit applications, you would want to go to the Acela Citizen Portal which is here. So if you have a pending application, you can go to this website and um, you could search by record number. You can do a, a really general search and, and pull up um, a lot of things here. So, you know, I can just enter a date range and pull up all the permits from this five-year range. Um, so a Sela citizen is what it, what it's called. It's got this funky URL, but if you just type in a Sela, a citizen, that will take you there. And we actually do have a, a I don't know, Paul, if anyone's going to talk about the building permit tracker or if I should. I probably, probably bring it up at, at the end um, okay. because, because I was going to have that as a part of this initially, but now that, that question comes up, it's something we can just share. Um, just to share, just to show everybody where it's going to be. So, so we want to at least have people start to utilize it. So, I'll bring it up at the end. Okay. Now, um, there's two hands still up. I'm not sure if they just Take left the questions. Take a minute, you can go ahead and unmute yourself. Uh, yes, I was just going to ask <clears throat> can you show that again as far as where you were pulling up as SAP, uh, the, the actual permits to, to check on uh, rezoning? <clears throat> Uh, the Acela for perm for building permits or the rezoning? Uh, the rezoning, I guess it was you were you were still in the yes in the city planning the planning year. Yeah, so you can there's a couple of ways you can do it. So if you have a specific rezoning case that you're interested in, you can go to this second widget called Legacy Rezoning Cases, and if you have say a land lot. Um, or a street address, or you have the actual um, zoning uh, docket number, which is one of these, or you have the city council ordinance number that passed that rezoning case. You can put those in here and um, pull that up. And if you hit apply, um, this will give you some general information. So it was for this street address. And then the document link will actually take you to um, the, the the text of the city um, rezoning. And now this document is the actual official, you know, end all be all of, of what the, zone, the rezoning is. As Paul mentioned at the beginning, our GIS is, is a representation of the real world. When you're really trying to think about the authoritative sources, it's things like the ordinance um, that represents the, the kind of authoritative um, uh, answer. Now, the other way to, to search more generally for rezoning cases would be, he, he can come in. You okay? Um, you can pull up the rezoning case layer 
within the land use planning. And, and this will pull up all of them in the city. And if, if you were just kind of doing a more general search, you could, you could do it that way. So it pulled it up over here. Also, a lot of our zoning cases involved with uh, uh, MPUs and zoning before. We know a lot of our zonings are conditional zonings, like an R4C. And that condition is almost a, a different zoning for that particular piece of property. Uh, a lot of our commercial zonings have conditions on it. So it, it, that condition could be, uh, this is not, all these uses are usually permitted in this type of commercial district. This one might be excluded, or it could be anything. And, and it's really, if, 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 if it is conditional zoning, if you're doing a, a zoning query and trying to find out what the zoning is, and you see that C1C or C2C or R4C, you can go back Enter in that information in the property and pull that legislation up to find what the condition is for that particular property. Perfect. Thank you, Graham. Thank you, Stuart. We have another question from the Shell Bell. You can um, unmute yourself, Michelle. Um, can you hear me now? Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. I have an issue right now. Okay, I um, was applying for a building permit um, and I was able to um, apply for that building permit using a seller. But when I, I got some comments back that, um, that a variance would be um, required for the homeowner to do what they wanted to do. So I went to GIS um, and put the address in and the address did not come up. And so I believe Atlanta has the permitting ju jurisdiction, but the property is located in DeKalb County. Um, are you gonna reconcile that kind of thing? Um, because some of the addresses were I was able to pull those up in GIS, but this particular one, I was not able to do that. Well, ma'am, I don't know your, your address specifically. Actually, which we can do, you have my information. Um, you can actually send an email through our website and we can look at yours okay. specifically. But in many cases, this is the situation that happens. The Atlanta, if you have an Atlanta address, the, the addresses are based off of the zip code. That the zip codes fall outside, well outside of the city's proper boundary. So you may have an address that says Atlanta, Georgia, but you live in DeKalb County. You still in DeKalb County because that your property falls outside of the city of Atlanta's proper boundaries itself. Okay, so I mean, that, that okay, so this, this one was like 237 Lowry Street. Okay, I I, I put that in and it said no results. But 229, 229 Lowry Street came up. Okay. Now, so, it, it, it may be something specific. We, we can look at yours specifically because because the address you may have may not. It may be an address that's official that we have provided, or it may be if you live on a corner lot. There's, there's certain situations. You live, if you live on a corner lot, you may be an address off of a different street than what you have. But we have an official address that we provide. And you may have had an address assigned, but let's look at yours specifically because um, if you can send us that email or um, this from the website, if you shoot us an email, I'd contact you directly itself so we can okay. figure out what's going on with yours specifically. Okay. Uh, Thank yeah. you. Sure, no problem. Yes. Let's see. And I think there was one question someone had. I thought, how many years does, does the legacy go back? I think it goes back over 100 years. That legacy... Um, zoning because we did everything. It was a box of all this, like all this zoning, all this, these, um, it was boxes of, um, all this legislation. We had hired a, a consulting company to come in and just scan everything we had that was all archived, everything. So it goes back years. And so, um, so it goes back quite, quite, quite a bit. All these legacy, um, um, rezoning cases. 
And one question was was about flood. Okay, uh, Graham, could you could you show the flood zones? Yeah, so I'm showing them now, and that's down here at the bottom of the layer list under reference data. If you turn that on, you can see um, the FEMA flood zones here. Um, I need to fix this. The blue, I believe, is 0.1% uh, annual chance of, of flooding. But um, yeah, that'll that'll give you a sense of um, the, the floodplain. I also received a question. Um, <clears throat> can layer lists be customized set up for individuals? Um, yes, in the sense that individuals can come here and turn layers on and off. But on the back end, as far as what's visible on the website, only we can control that. But you, you can you can turn things on and off. That's that's kind of um, up to you. And and again, there's a lot of layers in here, so it might be kind of daunting. Um, but yes, you 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 can. And one of the benefits is that once you've gone through and set it up, and when you come back again, it can it remembers. Um, what your initial setups was and everything, unless we do a refresh of the service itself, but it kind of re retains that that setup you had initially. If you if you because we open it up, there's a lot of layers on there. There's zoning, there's everything turned on, transportation, so you can turn those off and just have the layers that you're really interested in. And um, when you come back to the application, it will just retain that state that you had before. That's, that's all the questions. So what we can do right now, let's move on to, I know we're getting close to time here. Right? We are halfway um, seven, around 7.30. So let's move to Carl. Carl has, he's gonna speak about some of the, some of the one-off applications we have right now. So you can see some of the tools that we have that you have access to. You're gonna share a quick demonstration on how those tools function and what you can do. All right, Carl. Hi everyone, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Here to demonstrate one of our, I think is one of our best apps. Um, me being a GIS analyst, I get a lot of requests from commissioners and other people wanting to uh, have a list of, like do a mail out or something in the area. They want to send out information to you know constituents or about certain things going on in neighborhoods or MPUs, and this tool right here, I think is one of the, well, I love this tool myself, because I get a lot of requests. And our great team has created this app, which is very user-friendly. Um, if you're in the MPU, you want to send out information about, you know, um, um, anything that any one of your MPU wants to find out about a mail out or a certain meeting, you can go to our um, this app right here. And here, real simple, you have different, uh, you can use a point line. These different tools over here allow you to go in and select the area you wanna uh, print out um, the labels from. I like to use this one right here, that's a polygon label to where you can click, for example, MPUL. You can start here, as you see, click start to draw. So you click right here. And just drag it down to where you want to go. Click again, over. Just kind of outline this particular MPU to select pretty much all the parcels or addresses inside of this MPU. You just kind of go around clicking. And when you want to, the area that you want to select, double click and this will generate uh, a spreadsheet that you can actually download and you can either review it or download it to view all the addresses that have been selected in this particular MPU. So you click view, um, download, as you see download in the bottom of your map, click on it, it brings up an Excel spreadsheet where you can go in and you see all the addresses. Now here, depending on who you want to contact, uh, you had a first owner, there's a site, there's a site address, meaning 
the site of the property. Then you have the, the postal address, which is the owners of the property address. As you see, these addresses here are not in the city. Some in Lilburn, Georgia, Atlanta, Stone Mountain. But all these addresses here have you know, Atlanta addresses. But this is the actual CITES address of the property. If you're ever doing a mail out and you want to send information out, this is one of our new tools that we created to kind of simplify it and make it easier for you to be able to do that. Can I mention one thing real quick, Carl? Yes, yes. Uh, so this tool has a maximum of 2,000 records. So if there are more than 2,000 addresses in the NPU or whatever district you want to um, create a mailing list for, you just need to contest contact us directly and we can do that for you. Um, there are technical reasons for that, but the max is out at, at 2,000 addresses. Yes, that's Graham. He's one of our great team members that create these apps that are so helpful as far as the public and for you know the staff to be able to go in and make our jobs a lot easier. Uh, one, one question that came through um, thus far is how did you how did you get to this this application and stuff? Okay. Go back to the website. I can't hold on. Let me pull this thing down. There we go. To go in, go to you know, the city of Atlanta, and you can go to GIS where you go to planning. Let me go back, walk you through it. So the governments, city planning, this is the way I go in. There's a different way to go in, but city planning, come down to maps and GIS. Once you go here, maps and GIS and geography information systems, click right here, gisatlanta.gov. And once you are here, Scroll down. Here are all our popular apps. This app is the mailing label generator. So you click here and it brings up the mailing label generator. Now with me, if you go in and you see like my map, it did this on me um, the other day also. Click here to refresh. I know I had to click refresh to bring up all the tools. There we go. I don't know why that happened, but it did it before too. This brings up the ability to go in, get in, and um, select any tool that you want to use. So, you have any questions? Derek Henderson had a question. Do we have the ability to break these down into businesses or homeowners strictly while building a target area? I, I just answered that part. But no, I just, I just answered that question. But, but no, um, the, the milling generator, the, the milling um, uh, label generator, it pulls the, the, the address for all the parcels itself. So you can't differentiate between residential or commercial. It's just, it's just a pool of all the addresses itself. Any more questions? I see no hand. Oh, wait. Harden Ziegler, Ziegler, go ahead and uh, unmute yourself. Uh, good evening, everyone. How are you doing? Hey. Uh, on, on the uh, mail and address, if you go to the NPU, can you pull up a certain area inside the NPU and just print that area instead of the whole NPU? Oh, uh, yeah. When you go in, you can select you know, use this uh, polygon feature right here. You can actually zoom in, you know, you want a, a particular block or whatever area you want to select. Just a, give, give an example, instead of the polygon, give an example of, of using the point and using the buffer itself. That way, because this is what we use for the most, in most cases, is that you can select the actual address and then 
you can select all the parcels within, but if you, if you select that parcel there, if they could hit apply buffer also. So that point, yeah, if you click on apply buffer, so you can tell it how far of a, how much of a buffer you want it to um, apply to that. I can click on an address or type in a specific address and then tell it, select all the parcels within a 300 foot radius. And that way I can target who I want to send it to rather than trying to select, you know, you don't have to, do those large you know, mail outs and everything, but you can select just a specific area itself. Okay. Address point, or you can use like, the, like you said before, the, the polygon and just, you know, put a, you know, uh, use a line or a polygon or use, you can draw or draw out what you want um, to mail out the area you want to. You can draw that out and export that list. Or like I said before, you can use a, um, a buffer, you No. Know. Right, by setting the buffer right here. Okay, I appreciate that info. No problem. And I don't see any more questions or raised. Okay. Well, I want to do one thing to close out. It's something that was brought up um, a little while ago concerning the building permit. So I will just do a quick demo of that. Of something we've built and we're very proud of this um this particular application so you can pull it real quick um so I'm get my so this Share my screen. Well, while you're doing that, we have a question hanging up from Ms. Carla. Go ahead. Hi, it's me again. Um, just to backtrack really quick, um, on the map where you were able to set the parameters where there's a dot, you could go out to a certain uh, body, a radius, if you will. Is that one available in one of the YouTube tutorials, or we just have to kind of play with it on the site? It is available on one of the YouTube tutorials also. Yes, it is available. It's, it's probably an older version, probably about to update it's an older version, but, but the functionality is still the same. Yes. Okay, thank you. Yes, thank you, Carl. Yeah, excellent job, excellent job. So real quick, this link, we, this is, this is our, our building permit tracker that, that was built by, uh, by one of our colleagues and a lot of work with a lot of the team can have a lot of input in building this out. And so this building permit tracker, what it is, it, it's able to track all of the active permits and at various stages um, of, of, the, um, of their permitting process right now. You can track this and it's, and it's a link to what Stuart had mentioned, not Stuart, but uh, um, what Graham and Carl had mentioned earlier that it links back to a seller citizen ACA. So, when you first log in, so it's, it's, it's gis.atlantaga.gov, but it's slash building permit tracker. And then that will take you to this site. And here there's also, we also have a, a tutorial video that walked you through how to, how, how to use this site. So a lot of stuff we have, we create videos for them so you can easily be able to navigate how these applications work. So this quick splash page. So, so this, what you see here is pretty much a view of all of the permits within the city that's going on, all the active permits um, is updated every, every two weeks. So as you zoom in, these are clustered and they're all clustered by color. So this little layer list here show you what the, the colors represent. All the red represent commercial, or residential, um, single family, and the orange is multifamily. So as you zoom in, these clusters kind of break up. So you can go from these large up down, down to just the individual uh, points. And as you select, and this list here on the side, this is pretty much dynamic as it only shows whatever appears in this screen here. As you zoom in, so there's only a couple, only a, a couple uh, points that are available in this view. It also scales uh, in this list also. So if I select one of these residential properties here, it will give a right here says this cluster represents two permit records, and both of them are residential 
single family duplexes. So I can go through and look at the individual records or I can go over here to the side and pull up one of them. But if I click on this record here, this BB number here, it will give me all the details of that particular permit. It's open in 2000, in 2021, it was it's an issue permit. And I can go to the point here where if I want to see what the current status of that is, instead of calling the city and finding out, no, if this is your permit, you don't have to call one of the city representatives. You can go right here and click on this link. It will take you directly to a seller citizen and you can see the, you can get all the detailed information on that particular permit itself. You can go into the details of it. Um, you can see what the current, what, what payments have been made, what, what the fees are, what fees have been paid, um, any records, any attachments, um, the status currently, where it falls in the in the whole workflow process, who's looking at it, you know, where it stands right now. Right now, it's about to, it's ready for inspection. So all of these here, you can see the the, the complete life cycle of any permit application currently within our database, within our system. So it gives you a chance to to have some type of control. So and there's many ways you can you can look through this here. So you can choose this so you can draw a graphic around it similar to what Carl was doing. You can use a graphic and just draw a uh, let, uh, draw a graphic. Oh, it's spinning. Yeah, we have a lot of resources going right now. So yeah, I'm about to about that. So so the same thing that appears here also appears in this side here. So we also have access to Google Street View. So if you go to this particular permit, you can look at the a seller citizen app, or you can go into the street view of that permit and you actually see that development itself. So if this is the work that's been done on it for that permit, you can actually go straight to that street view to see that particular permit. In addition to all of this, um, one of the things we're, we're also allowed to do, we, we provided where you can see the different status. These are issued permits. All, to, all the way to the ones that have already have been completed. So it's a wide range of statuses that you can look at and see the different permits that have been issued and in the various stages of that um, life cycle of that permit. But we're, we're just releasing this application. So we, we, we would love for your feedback. So if you start working with this and you see things, things to be added or information you need it. So we're gonna be sharing this link. It's gonna be a part of the website itself. We're gonna be sharing this link also so that you can go in and start doing your doing some reviews. In addition to this, on our website, we also have a survey. Because what we've been doing is that we know we don't have all the answers. We're trying to build applications and make this something that's user-friendly to you, the citizen, so that you can come here and be more self-sufficient and get the information you need without having to call the city all the time. You know, I know it's great to speak to us sometimes, but sometimes you want to be able to pull information on your own and go about your business. And so we have a survey on our website that you can go to and tell us what it is that you will love for our GIS capabilities to, to, to be able to provide. If you don't have access to that now, what are you, what's your wish list that you wish we could do, we could provide this type of service or this type of application. And in some cases, we have that already, you just don't know where it is. And that's pretty much more of our education and, and a marketing piece to let people know what we have access, what people have access to, similar to these type of training. So, um, so we'll definitely be able to share that link also to for our survey, and we definitely welcome anyone to give us any feedback on some of the their wish list of things that they will love to be able to have access to GIS. Um, with that, um, we open it up for any questions. But we're pretty much have, uh, at the end of our presentation, so we want to thank everyone. I want to thank once, once again the MPU team for um, for inviting us enough for a second year, and I want to thank my entire team. I mean, I have a, I have a, we, we're the smallest, but we're probably the most dynamic team to work with. Uh, GIS team, we're a very small team, but a, a powerhouse you know, in everything we do. I want to thank everyone for the time they've invested in these two hours that we spent with us. Um, if you have any questions, please, um, we're here to answer any questions before um, we close out this session. So I'm not seeing any questions um, and I want to take this opportunity actually because a lot of you all 
or asking about information on applications and things like that. So I want to show you briefly something that one of our interns actually created at the time when she was an intern, but now she's full time. Sharita, who's actually on the call, it's our MPU dashboard. And if you go to mpuatlanta.org, you scroll over and click on MPU dashboard. And like Paul said, when it's loading, it's just a lot, it takes a longer time. But <clears throat> our dashboard is very interactive. You can click on it. And when you click on it, you can look at every BZA, VRB, and LRB application site. And you can also see how MPUs vote. So, because <clears throat> I noticed a lot of you all were asking questions that were um, in that area in scheme of things. So make sure you uh, favorite or bookmark mpuatlanta.org and just, there's a lot of things on there, as well as registering for MPU University. And uh, one more thing, I was looking for Leah. I'm right here. Okay. Oh, you just, oh, you were just looking for me? <laughs> no, I'm gonna do this. Um, also, we have our upcoming MPU University courses. Um, and I realized that we use a lot of acronyms in this department, and I understand that can be aggravating, especially if you don't know what they mean. So for our CL 1003.002, community leadership, that's what that stands for. Um, the next course coming up is our managing discussion around hot topics, parliamentary procedures two. That will actually be next Wednesday after the holiday, June 1st at 6 p.m. online. We have several seats available, so please make sure you register. CP, meaning civic participation. Uh, CP 1001, the legislative process, that will be Thursday, June 9th at 6 p.m. to learn about the legislative process within the actual city of Atlanta. Um, CD, community development, is 1003.003, a part of our housing series, a continu continuation, tenants' rights and responsibilities. That would be Thursday, June 23rd, and that is in partnership um, with Atlanta Legal Aid. <clears throat> and then our uh, final course for the month is our Civic Participation 1003, Civic Participation for Seniors course, which is on a Tuesday, June 28th, and it actually will be in person and hybrid at 10 a.m. for our seniors. We wanna keep them engaged. So if you would like to register for any of these courses, please feel free to register at npuatlanta.org. And if you want to follow us to find more information about our courses or just anything all NPU Atlanta, we're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at NPU Atlanta. And we're also on next door under City of Atlanta Neighborhood Planning Units. Leah, do you have any closing words for our guests? I do not. Thank you all for being here. And thank you to my colleagues in GIS. I see some coworkers from around City Hall. Thank you all for being here as well. I hope that you enjoyed MPU University. It's always, always good to see our familiar faces. Hi, Ms. Nichols. I know, I should, I'm sorry. Samantha hates when I do that, but. It's hi, Jennifer. <laughs> hi, Ms. Glover. Hi, Ms. Reynolds. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's always good to see y'all. Um, that's all. Hi, Ms. Roder. Hey. Love, I just love what you guys are doing, and I hope I can tell more people about it. We're in Atlanta, maybe the only city that has this kind of thing, and it is so fantastic. Well, thank you. We're we're very proud of the work that we do, and proud to pre uh, present all of this information to all of you. So I'm just glad that people actually want this information. Yes, and, and thank it, so. you so much to the person who said, "Let's explain things." Thank you. Awesome. Oh, hey, Ebony in Fire and Rescue. Hi, Miss Ebony. <laughs> Hello, how y'all doing? Very glad to see co-workers. Anybody else here from City of Atlanta? Co-workers? Oh, Anita from Invest Atlanta. Hi, Anita, Director of, Vice President, I'm sorry, Vice President of uh, Community Development, something like that, over at Invest Atlanta. Very glad to have you here, Anita. Thank you I so much, Good to see you. And I see Miss Cora Jean over there. I don't know what department, but I see your City of Atlanta shirt. Um, all right, I won't delay things any further, but I'm just excited to have you all here. Very happy that you learned stuff from it. And thank you again to GIS. Thank you to Samantha and um, the team, particularly Samantha for pulling all of this together. So thank you guys.
Everyone have a safe weekend and safe holiday weekend. And we will see you next week for our next class. Good night. Good night.